Gina Litherland is the artist I'm going to talk about today. Here is her painting called Little Red Cap. She painted it in 2011, oil on panel, 18 by 24. Litherland was born in Gary, Indiana. She has been active in the visual arts since the mid-1970s, exploring photography, performance, drawing, and painting. She studied at the School of the Art Institute of Chicago, and her paintings, drawings, and articles have been published worldwide in journals and periodicals. So in her painting, The Little Red Cap, it is related to the lineage of love and affairs between girl and wolf that runs from Paul Delure's to the Brothers Grimm's and Charles Perrault's folk and fairy stories. In visual terms, Little Red Cap is reminiscent of one of Gustave Doré's etchings for Perrault's version of the text. Like the French artist, Litherland depicts a meeting and an exchange of gazes between a brave girl and a charming beast who is eager to engage in conversation. Despite the fact that this wolf is enormous and that it is showing its menacing pointing teeth in spite of threatening pack of wolves behind him that can be distinguished in the foggy background, Litherland's educated girl, so do not miss the books and paintbrushes in her basket, stares directly at the wolf and she seems unafraid, unafraid and stands firm and is not a defenseless and helpless creature but that she can meet the wolf as an equal. She might even play tricks on him. The wolf's color matches the girl's color of her coat, showing that they are not that different after all. The wolf's posture is not threatening, and he acts unsure of what to expect from this educated girl with her brightly red cap and blue stockings, making her stand out from everything around her. The wolf thinks, should I eat her? She is not running from me like the other animals. She is up to something. So in Leatherland's little red cap, it is not a golden rectangle, but is a, it is a rectangle, but not a golden rectangle. It's 18 by 24. Even though it is not, we can look at its composition by using the basic armature. See how the, the guidelines line up with the right line and the left lines line up with the wolf. And so also to talk about the rule of thirds, she uses it here, as you can see, the right panel lines runs through the young girl and the left panel lines run through the front of the wolf. The top horizontal line intersects with her horizon. The bottom horizontal line runs through the wolf's body. She obviously used the techniques to plan out her composition. The rule of odds. In this painting, there are three main characters and four in the background that are hard to make out. In the rule of entrance, in this painting, the wolf's leg extends out, letting the viewer follow his leg up to his head that looks towards the young girl. The rule of aerial perspective, in this painting, the background is softening due to, due to the fog that is present. The rule of awkwardness. The back of the main wolf is cropped, and some of the background as well. That is not what I would call as an awkward crop. Rule of allure. In this painting, there is an allure to see what happens next, but nothing is particularly obscured except there is a building, and the viewer may wonder what is inside there. The rule of motion. The wolves in the background are walking from left to right. Their legs are in mid-stride. The rule of pictorial thrust. There are rows of trees creating a line downward towards the main wolf and the girl. I wouldn't say it was a thrust, but it does make your eyes follow down to the main characters. The rule of contrast. The, bright, the girl's bright red cap and the blue stockings are a contrast compared to the other colors that are more somber in the painting. The rule of repetition. There is a repetition of rocks and trees in this painting. Rule of gradients. There is a gray fog in the background. In the middle ground is less gray fog and in the foreground there are none. Rule of spontaneous generation and the rule of closure. 
The wolf is partially cropped along with two wolves cropped in the background. The rule of enclosure. The house and woods are surrounded, surround the wolf and the girl, creating a feeling of enclosure. Rule of proximity. The wolf and the girl are right next to each other, creating a unity, which is the center of the story here. Rules of equilibrium. In this painting, the wolf and girl balance the painting and creates a symmetry. Since 1955, Leatherland has lived and worked in Wisconsin. In her magnificently detailed and inventive paintings, Gina Leatherland extends a tradition of Midwest surrealism and magic realism that stretches back to the 30s and 40s in the work of Gertrude Ambercombe, Sylvia Fain, Julia Thesia, and John Wilde. She studied painting at the School of Art Institute in Chicago, and her paintings, drawings, articles have been published worldwide in journals and periodicals associated with the Intentional Surrealist Movement. Have you heard of that? International Surrealist Movement. Her essays on the connections between creative activity and the natural world, imagination, and wilderness appeared in Surrealist Women, an international anthology anthology published by University of Texas Press. Litherland's recent work was the subject of a museum exhibition at the James Watrous Gallery of the Wisconsin Academy of Sciences, Arts and Letters in Madison in 2006.